you have the chance to win a Spring Super Sweeps from Alleist. Donate $60 for one entry to win a brand new Lexus or $25,000 in cash. Check out all the other prizes too when you donate now at alleist.com slash sweeps. LAS Studios. It's kind of a part of, of Little Tokyo history and of Los Angeles history that almost no one knows. Hey, LA. I'm Brian De Los Santos, and this is How to LA. Japanese silent film and the performers that support it are getting the spotlight this weekend with a series of performances in Los Angeles, billed as the art of the Benchy. It's a part of a world tour that's already been to Washington, D.C., Chicago, and New York. L.A. is its last stop before heading to Tokyo. Now, I don't want to give too much away in the intro, but I want to tell you I've never really gave silent film from Japan any thought. I mean, I don't even know it was a thing. So in today's episode, I really did learn something new about an old art form and how it connects to the city's history, which y'all know I love. Leave it to Harole producer Victoria Alejandro to school me just a little bit. She spoke with UCLA professor of Japanese literature Michael Emmerich and the lead benshi Ichiro Kataoka. So Victoria is here today to bring us some history about silent film and its place in Los Angeles history. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Brian. All right, let's just kick things off with what is a benshi? Okay, so a benshi is a performer. The simplest explanation is that they're like the narrators of silent film. So I don't know if you've ever been to a screening of a movie where maybe they play the score live. Not yet. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so think about that kind of thing where there's a live element to the screening that you're seeing. Hmm. So I spoke with UCLA professor Michael Emmerich, and he actually explained that there's more to a Benchy performance. I asked what material they work off of, thinking that, like, this kind of performance is over 100 years old. Is there written material that they're working with? But each performer actually writes their own script. Which means that if you see the same film with different Benchy, you'll end up coming away with maybe a really different impression. And in fact, as part of this tour, we have the same film being screened three times. The earliest uh, Japanese animation, the oldest anime, um, we're screening three times with each Benchy performing a unique script. And for one of the shows, we'll be screening the same short film twice in a row with different Benchy performing. So you'll have a chance to see how much of an impact it makes. So how common is seeing a movie with a Benchy? So today, not very. Uh, the Benchy Ichiro Kataoka told me that currently there are about 15 Benchy performing in Japan. Michael interpreted for him in our interview. So in Japan today, there are only about 15 benshi performing. Um, so it's not, I don't think you could say that it's really uh, a, a common thing to have a chance to see benshi performing, uh, even in Japan. It used to just be how you saw a movie. I want to get this right for everyone. This kind of seems to totally affect how an audience sees a movie today. Yeah, for sure. Old film is already so difficult to preserve, and imagine just being able to lose a totally different but really integral part of it. On this tour, one of the films you can see is a Japanese film from the 1920s. It's called A Page of Madness. It's one of those silent films that was presumed completely lost for 45 years. Wow. It's an avant-garde experimental horror film that people have described as really hard to understand, which is partly because it was initially supposed to be watched with a benshi. As soon as you put in the benshi and you watch it, the way this amazing, great, historic film was meant to be seen, it's a totally different work. Okay, so this is film history. Now I'm curious to hear more about LA history. What's the connection here? I'm kind of thinking maybe it's Little Tokyo. For sure. While there are only 15 benshi today, there used to be around 7,000. So wherever Japanese immigrants and cinema went, the Benshi went too. So there, I mean, there's still people alive who actually can remember when that was happening in Little Tokyo. It's kind of a part of, of Little Tokyo history and of Los Angeles history that almost no one knows, which is one of the reasons that it's, it's such a special thing to have a chance to experience it uh, as a result of this tour. A movie theater called the Fuji Con opened in Little Tokyo in 1925. And just a reminder, that's in downtown L.A., which is a spot where a lot of folks who had just immigrated to the city landed. 
Movie theaters had come and gone from the area, and at the time of its opening, there hadn't been a theater in Little Tokyo for almost 10 years. The movies were a cheap place to socialize and spend time with other immigrants, and Benshi also performed there as stars in their own right. There's this news ad for a screening in 1926 where the Benchy's headshot is printed, and he's credited bigger than the actors in the film itself. And these silent films and the Benchy would do sort of these West Coast tours, performing in Gardena, Torrance, Santa Barbara, wherever there were enclaves of Japanese immigrants. I love that meshing of cultures in here in L.A. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but when we're back, we're going to talk about what happened to that theater. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. And we're back. So the Fujikan movie theater was super popular in Little Tokyo, and Benshi were touring around the West Coast. What happened? The Fujikan theater closed during World War II in 1941, when Japanese incarceration camps were established in California. The theater reopened under new ownership and a new name for a few years, and then closed for good, and was demolished in the 1960s. So that space downtown is now a bank and a parking lot. Wow. So we're chatting about this now because the Benshi are performing in L.A. this weekend. Yeah, very cool. Where will people be able to see these screenings and performances? For sure. So two of the nights will be in the Billy Wilder Theater at the Hammer Museum. But the performance on the 19th will be taking place at what used to be the Ace Hotel. So it's now the United Theater on Broadway. Benshi Ichiro Kataoka is actually really looking forward to performing in that space specifically. Personally, I'm extremely excited about performing at the United Theater um, because of the history it's got. You know, it was opened um, with the involvement of Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford. So uh, as a as a performer, I am really, really excited to be there. Wait, so let's pause here because I want to know what's the history of that theater. Yeah, okay. Initially, it was the United Artists Theater, and that was founded by D.W. Griffith, Douglas Fairbanks, Charlie Chaplin, and Mary Pickford. Those are the silent film artists who founded United Artists in 1919 as an independent studio to get around those, like, you've heard of the stifling contracts of Mm -hmm. big studios at the time. That theater opened in 1927 as a space to showcase their movies. And as you're probably aware, it's now gone from being the theater at the Ace Hotel to the United Theater on Broadway. So that theater is so rooted in the history of silent film, it's kind of a full circle moment in all of the history we've been talking about. All right, Victoria, I kind of want to ask you this last question. What was the most interesting thing you learned as talking with the Benshi and the historian? I think the most interesting thing I learned was... Something I've always felt about watching movies where you can see the same thing multiple times and walk away with something different each time. And this is really literal, where each performer can have their own interpretation of a film. And so if you see the same movie three times this weekend with the Benchy, you will walk away with three different interpretations and three different feelings and memories of that movie. Dang. I think that's really cool. That is hella cool. <laughs> So, Victoria, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all this L.A. theater and movie history with us. Yeah, of course. Always good to be here, Brian. That was Harole producer Victoria Alejandro. Thank you to Professor Michael Emmerich and to Benchy Ichiro Katsuoka. You can catch the Art of the Benchy tour in L.A. through this weekend. We'll have links for you in the show notes. And one more thing before we leave you, the LA Times Festival of Books is this weekend, and I'll be there on Sunday with How to LA and LA as colleagues. So come hang out and say hi to our booth. You might get some How to LA swag to take home. Alrighty, y'all. Catch you next time. This episode is produced by Victoria Alejandro. The rest of the How to LA team is Megan Botel, Monica Bushman, Evan Jacoby, and Erica Washington. Our engineer is Hasmik Pagosian, and our executive producer is Megan Larson. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, 
who believe that quality journalism makes LA a better place to live. Support comes from Ciclavia, catalyzing vibrant public spaces, active transportation, and good health through car-free streets. Ciclavia promotes respect and infrastructure for bike and pedestrian-friendly public spaces. Enjoy these pop-up parks for the day in your favorite people-powered way. Jogging, biking, skating, strolling, or simply spectating. Free and open to all, Ciclavia Sundays generate miles of smiles in neighborhoods all over L.A. Details at www.ciclavia.org.